Hello, friends, and welcome to episode two of Missed Conceptions. I'm your host, David White. Before we get to the adventure today, let me say thank you to everyone who listened to episode one and everybody who came back to listen to episode two. Thanks to those of you who have subscribed, and thanks to those who have reached out to me on the Misconceptions Facebook and Twitter to say that they enjoyed the show. Uh, that means a lot. Thanks. It's it's always great whenever you know you put all this work into something creative and and people like it. It's encouraging. Uh, I will say, I'm still not happy with the audio from episode one, and in fact, the audio from this episode is still kind of iffy because it was recorded in the same session as the first episode, and we, I didn't realize that the audio quality was so bad yet. Uh, but I will say that before you're like, oh no, not this again. Before you do that, I have gone in, I made the audio quality a lot better than episode one. So even though it's still iffy, even though it's not perfect to me, it might not bother you, because I went in and fixed it. And I hope it doesn't bother you, because audio quality is important. Also, uh, holy cow, we were confirmed for iTunes a lot sooner than I thought we would be, which is great because iTunes is probably the most popular podcatcher out there, uh, makes it easier for people to find us, to listen to us, so that's really great for us. Anyways, I'm glad you're here, I'm glad you're listening to us, I hope you're having a great day, and I don't want to take up too much more of your time, so uh, let's get to the adventure. Previously on Misconceptions. There's been a new drug on the streets. Uh, no one really knows where it's come from, and in fact, uh, very few people in the city know about it. The people that take the drug get very violent and very bestial. A dealer connected to this drug is going to be having some sort of cell going down at 7. I am playing Faye Carver, and she is a teacher who is really passionate about social justice. John has come to school before with bruises on his face. But you think maybe it is time for you to have a... Uh, a face-to-face -face meeting with this man outside of the uh, school building. If you if you know what I mean. Ah, uh, Bill, uh, I have your new assignment for tonight. You open up the Manila folder and you see the dossier on tonight's target. Uh, there's a picture paper clip to the dossier, and it is a man with disheveled white hair and big horn-rimmed glasses on his face. He's kind of shrimpy looking. This ain't gonna be like last night with the old lady mishap. You're gonna find this dude quick and quiet. You understand me? I think so. Faye, it is after school, all the kids have gone home, uh, and you have uh, found yourself at a pub downtown uh, called Morty's. I decided, you know what, in my spare time, I'm just gonna go ahead and go on in okay. and get a drink. Esther, somebody, uh, a new customer has sat down at your bar. Name's Esther. Hi, hi, I'm, I'm Faye Kava. What can I get you? Have you ever seen a, a big man kind of burly? He has a tattoo on his forearm. It's, it's a knife and a snake. Richard pulls himself up to his full height and he pulls back his arms and you can hear his bones popping and he, he looks down at you menacingly and he says, Mrs. Carver, you need to get back to school before you get hurt. She stands up as well and straightens up. I'm not afraid of you, Richard. You should be. Ren, you have followed this man back uh, to a downtown warehouse. I like slowly grab my gun and start aiming it at him. And as you, as you get ready to pull the trigger. Hi, hey Pedro. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to catch this Pedro guy. Can Custom. I help him across the street? The doors to your pub just swing open, and this dude in a hoodie and a gun just out, just burst through the door. So at this moment, um, you notice a very small vine that comes in and just trips him. As he falls forward, I grab his gun. And right at that moment, uh, two guys, one with a very futuristic looking shotgun, and the other with just bare arms full of tattoos kick in the door. You've got to be kidding me. I run up and I punch him in the face. <laughs> the city. 
mashed up combo of the old world and the new, of the mundane and the mystical. By day, this city is everything it seems. A city with tower and skyscrapers, potholes that never seem to stay fixed, and stiffs and ties and dames and high heels. But at night, the real nature of the city comes out. At night, the shifty-eyed stalker becomes a creature with dripping claws and a maw full of teeth. At night, cars roll down the streets with no one in the driver's seat. But when morning comes, nobody can remember how the night really went. They remember through a fog, or more appropriately, a mist. No one knows where the mist came from, or its true nature. In fact, most everyone in the city doesn't even know the mist exists. The mist doesn't just cover up either. It affects everything and everyone in the city, changing them, warping them. Most of those affected by the mist, they take what the mist gives them to turn a profit or pursue selfish gains. But there are some, just a few, that fight the good fight. They put their necks on a line to protect the city from the nefarious ne'er-do-wells. It's not always easy. In fact, it never is. But these legends don't surrender. This is a story of a few of those legends. Their story needs to be told. And it needs to be heard. David should yeah, have to edit this out because he's a nerd. <laughs> How audible is that? I mean, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's go around the table, and since it's been a, a week or so since our last episode, let's go around and reintroduce the characters and learn a little bit more about them. Uh, let's start with Carrie. Uh, who are you playing? I am playing Esther Black. Okay. And Esther, uh, I'm going to ask all of you the same question, but Esther, you'll uh, answer this one first. Esther, what is your favorite Netflix show to binge watch? Um, that would be Cheers. Uh, how appropriate. Um, my father and I used to watch it together, um, oh. and I used to think that that was the theme song for our bar. Oh, okay. So, Morty's, where everybody knows your name. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and let's go to uh, Tessa next. Tessa, who are you playing? I'm playing Faye Carver. Okay. Uh, and what Netflix show does Faye like to binge watch? Um, Faye switches between watching uh, reruns of Robin Hood and Downton Abbey. Oh, okay. Kind of very different shows. Yes, okay. yes. Like, which, which Robin Hood? Because there's like a lot of Robin Hoods out there. I've never watched any Robin Hood in my <laughs> life. <laughs> and then <it's> nice. <laughs> Okay, um... <laughs> You haven't even seen the Disney animated I've never one? seen... I've ne I don't know the story of Robin Hood other than he steals from the rich and gives to the poor. Like, I know nothing about Robin Hood. But wow. I am playing a character. <laughs> it's really... It's great. Wow. You have... You, you've got to watch the Disney. Well, we're going to do that sometime. You have okay. to watch the Disney one. Okay. That's, that's a classic. It's a good one. Yeah. They reuse, like, Jungle Book animation all throughout the movie. It's great. Good. Um, good also hasn't seen Jungle Book. I haven't. It's too scary. <sighs> What? Like, the live action one or the animated one? The live action one I refused to see because it was truly terrifying. And I've never seen the animated one. Wow, you... Had, do you like Disney? I do. I love Disney. I just... Okay, we'll come back to you. <laughs> she the next, the next question the for next Disney. session is going to be, do you actually love Disney? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then let's come to Zach. Zach, who are you playing? I'm playing Ren Pascal. Okay. And uh, what uh, what Netflix show does Ren like to uh, binge watch? He switches between Mr. Robot. <laughs> nice. That's perfect. And Luther. Uh, Ooh, nice. So he's trying to go for this like detective kind of like Idris Elba, mm -hmm. but also be super technological and like amazing. Yeah, yeah. hack the system. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, that person do whopping is a uh, Jaime. Uh, <laughs> I mean, who are... That was disco, not doo-wop. Oh. I don't know. All I heard was doo-doo-doo. 
<laughs> Sound like doo wop. I know what doo wop is. Tommy, <laughs> who are you playing? Doo-wop. I'm playing Bill. You're playing Bill. Uh, what is Bill's favorite Netflix show to binge watch? Well, Bill likes binge watching Stranger Things and Longmire. Tessa, do you know? Have you watched Stranger Things? Um, no, that would be scary. Oh my god. So Tessa! She also doesn't watch Psych. Hey. Psych is too scary. Whoa! What is wrong with you? <laughs> I have extreme anxiety. Oh my god. I want to watch Get Out. That looks good. I know. I want to watch it for the race relations, but I can't even get through the trailer, so. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty suspenseful. I yeah. will say that's not even true about hypnosis. You do have full control when you're being hypnotized. Yeah. What? <clears throat> Well, the show about get, get Out is about hypnosis. You do. Where, like, you're it's hypnotizing a, um, people. Thriller. But, like, it's... Are you spoiling things for our podcast listeners? Right no, now? no. no that's... And the villain was the woman all along. <laughs> you have full control during hypnosis, but yeah. do, if you don't know you do, then you're Welcome still... Welcome to Misconception. You know what I mean? Like, we discuss like, understandably, various theories you, you still have full control of your faculties brain and body control, while you're hypnotizing. hypnotism, But if you don't control. know that... It's a, great, it's a great podcast. We're glad before, that you're here. You well, can they, still be trapped by the fact that you don't know that you can get out of it. Yeah. Well, that was still Y'all my too, Anyways, <laughs> we're, we're just going to start Yeah, podcasts. anyways. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's go back to Morty's bar. And um, the, the scene is kind of frantic. A guy just ran through the door, pulled out a, a gun on everybody. Uh, he got tripped by an unseen assailant. Uh, <coughs> the bartender snatched up his gun and then two... Mm, very different looking people charge through the door one with tattoos one with a big futuristic looking shotgun um and uh yeah so this guy's on the ground and everybody's kind of uh not panicky but little excited and this guy is going to kind of push himself off off the ground and he's going to take a wild swing at bill so, Bill, roll a, uh, a face did he danger. Already, did he already take the damage from being punched in the face while prone? I'm going to say that as you are coming to punch him, he comes up to to punch you. So roll a face the danger first. I hate you. <laughs> so what, what power tags are you adding to your uh, face the danger roll? Skull crusher. <clears throat> Rough exterior. Quick hands. And all in, because I'm 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 going. Like that. Mm. If I like for a defense, I like quick hands and rough exterior. I guess I'm not defending. That's a, okay. No, I'll let you. You roll the face of danger now, then you can roll your hit with all you've got. That's backwards. <laughs> all right. So then, if I'm just doing purely defensively right now, then I use quick hands and rough exterior. Okay. And soul stealing. I'm just kidding. Okay. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. So that's two power tags. Mm-hmm. Uh, seven plus two, nine. <clears throat> no, it's pretty much seven. <laughs> no, I have put two power tags. Yeah, oh, so that's yeah, yeah. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops. So you rolled five plus two is seven. I was like, like, what? What are you doing? Like, you can't just lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> All right. So uh, you you see it coming, but you don't get out of the way fast enough. You take a uh, injured mm, one status. Or you know what? A scuffled one status. Minus one? So uh, zero. It's just, so the way... So, Listeners, let's give you a little background information on the game. Uh, instead of like HP or anything, everybody damage and different things are inflicted by tags. And so Jaime has just had a tag inflicted on him at a level one. Uh, you can go up to a level six tag, at which point like you're you're incapacitated, you're dead. The watcher takes control of your character. You're completely mind washed, uh, whatever. But now he has a a one tag, and so basically. That can be increased by future attacks that target it and target him and try to bring that up more, but it will also be a a, a negative for his rolls or anything that would that the scuffled up status would otherwise affect. Uh, so this dude pushes himself off the off off the ground as you're coming to punch him. 
He punches you right in the face. Uh, how do you come back? I'm, I'm going to punch him in the face. Okay. Uh, skull crusher. Quick hands. That's probably it. Okay. I still think I should be able to use all in. I feel like all in's like gambling though. Not. Yeah. Fighting. But okay, I'm I'm not gonna in this game gonna gamble. I put all in because it fits. It like sounds catchy. It fits my character. And whenever mm -hmm. he's going to do something, there are times whenever there isn't any turning back. And so, like, his determination means he's going to keep going. Okay. And so, that's why I put it. If not, I'll change it to something else. No. I, I mean, I like that. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead and roll it. So, it's a plus three? Yeah. So, so, hit him with all you got. Twelve. Yeah. So, you got a, you got twelve. So, you hit him. Uh, go ahead and choose on a ten. You get to choose two of any of these options. You take cover. Uh, you get them good. There's no collateral damage. You hold the target's attention. Uh, you can move them, or you can gain an advantage on the battlefield. Get them good. And then I m move them. Can I move them into a prone position so that other attacks so knock are, him, are, more, are more effective? Instead of moving them, since, you're wanting, since you expressly said like you want to knock them down and give other people an advantage against them, mm -hmm. uh, you can... Uh, Instead, instead of moving, give yourself an advantage on the battlefield, which gives you one juice, All right. and then you could inflict like a, a, a knockdown status on him with that, that juice. And instead of knocking him down, I'll say he has a cut above his left eye, because I threw a right at him, mm -hmm. and that's going to get into his eye and cause him to have a harder time seeing, so it, people could be more effective against him. Since you got him good... Your tag is uh, the power that you rolled with your attack plus one. So how many power, what was your power for that roll? Three, like three power tags? Yeah, so three power tags plus, plus one four. is a four. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that you you straight knock this dude out um, because you, you got him, you did get him very good. So he comes up and just smacks you right in the face and you uh, describe how, how this ectoplasm works because we haven't seen your powers happen yet oh, okay so uh, my fist is cocked back and though i've got a long sleeve shirt on you know whenever you're moving around and stuff the sleeve come usually comes back a little mm -hmm. bit a few inches and you see on the tattoos on my wrist that they're glowing and they start crawling up my wrist and then they pull out of my skin and form brass knuckles around my fist mm -hmm. as i'm throwing and i make connection and this guy hits the ground and then I, I shake my hands a couple of times and it kind of recesses back into onto okay. the tattoos of mine. So it was it was discreet enough that nobody saw it. Okay. Yeah, so you, you knock this dude out. He goes, uh, and he collapses back onto the ground with a pretty huge gash above his eye. It's a strong punch you got there. Yeah. What was that for? I was trying to talk to him and now you've just ruined everything. Thanks, whatever burly man your name is. I don't... Who? I was here first. I found him. Actually, you didn't find I him. was here first. This is my bar, and I'm gonna need some answers. I don't answer to you. Actually, um, I'm the 17. one who tripped him, so I think that I win in this whole discussion. Hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Faye. Oh, gosh. I'm the one that got the gun. Like I said, this is my place. You're on my property now. I'm going to ask questions, and you are going to give answers. Can I get a whiskey first? No. Huh? Sucks to be you. <laughs> You're not getting one either. I don't want one from your bar. Who is this stinking I punch nerd? him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that happens. <laughs> do, you, do you cold cock this dude? Yeah. <laughs> I'm functioning on little to no sleep. Okay, go ahead and roll a uh, a go toe to toe. I'm going to use um, Daddy Spider, mm -hmm. and could I use? It's all me, like because it's my bar. Like this is my. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> I got four. But what did you roll? 
I rolled snake eyes. Snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, you rear back to punch this dude in the head, and uh, you do hit him in the head, but uh, it seems like there is something beneath his skin that is not quite bone, not quite flesh, and just ding. And Man, dude, what the heck? Back off, lady. What do you want from me? I already said I want answers. Who is this guy? Maybe we should just all go sit somewhere and talk this out. I feel like that would be the most productive use of our time. It's sweet that you want to run the show, but like I said, this is my bar. We're going to do this my way. I want to know who this guy is. How about instead of uh, arguing over who this guy is, let's let's get some rope around his arms and possibly legs and probably mouth. Just wrap him in rope, and then we talk about it. Got any rope? Nope. I'll take care of it. So I, like, (laughs) grab him by his legs and pull him outside. (laughs) Okay, so this this very aggressive like, teacher <laughs> that was just going to get into a fist fight with your burly bearded customer just picks up this unconscious That's body. That's still wearing a dress, by the way. Oh, yeah, yes, she is yes. dressed in her, her school yet. uniform. And flower crown. <laughs> and my flower crown. <laughs> dragon, Can dragon I ask what kind of footwear you're, you're wearing currently? Oh, like ballet flats, like brown ballet flats. Naturally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I drag him out... Um, to just to like where well, the grass you start is. to drag him, and I realize that this is gonna take a while. So <laughs> I get the head and arms and like lift him so we can carry him. Okay, so we have Pedro just like outside, mm-hmm. um, and we're like on the grass, and so you see these like vines kind of come up, um, and they tie themselves around his hands and then tie around his feet, and then. Um, Instead of doing, like, vines around his mouth, because that would just be painful and unnecessary, um, there's, like, a very thick leaf-type structure that is kind of, like, the width of a bandana, and it, like, wraps itself around. Okay, let's get him somewhere so that we can deal with this, and let's not mention everything that happened out here quite yet. You're kind of bossy. Yeah, well, I'm a teacher. I never liked teachers. Yeah, well... I'll grow on you. Don't worry. Okay, so let's go ahead. Literally. Ah, see what I did there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go somewhere. Everybody's staring at us. At this point in time, I, I like literally look out. around and there's nobody outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Richard is the only dude on the sidewalk, and he's just walking the other way. <laughs> so I walk let's out. Just take him to the back alley. What are you guys doing? I thought, what is even happening? Who are you? I'm, I'm Faye. We actually already met. Um, but that's okay. You know, you seem forgetful. Calm down, Tin Man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, what? what? Why does he have a leaf over his mouth? That's not going to work. So I pull, my, gonna, I pull my sock dare. off. And I stuff it into that's his mouth. That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. That ought, How, to, that ought to tie him off. It's also a nice little punishment, too. <laughs> That's yes, just but the question is, who is he and why are we punishing him? That's and fair. why are we a we? I'm punishing him because he knows information that I need. And this dingus over here, just sitting dingus. around. Yeah, I was dingus. about to shoot him. Oh my <laughs> gosh, just I just need answers. Mary I don't Joseph. need the arguing. You, he with the smart, a- hey, you with the smart mouth, <sighs> I need you to shut up for like two minutes. Give me two minutes. That can't be that hard. You Fine. make a... Keep him quiet. Rin, Rin starts a timer and like a, <laughs> like a little holographic time in his eyeball. He has information that you need. Yes, I, I work for... Uh, Jeremiah, he owns the Golden Flamingo. I'm familiar. And I, I needed information from this guy to go assist me in collecting debts from somebody else. Yeah, and and I, I, I bust into this guy's shop. I'm going to... Rough him up probably a little bit because, you know, that's what I do. (laughs) And this dingus is sitting in the dark diddling himself. Just that was inappropriate. <laughs> inappropriate. Can we can we edit it out diddling himself? Nope, that, Twi- is, that is in there and I'm not editing it. Sitting in the dark, twiddling his thumbs, being an idiot, and he just interrupts my whole process, and in the process, he lets this guy get away. So, after we argue It's all for a my bit, fault. You came in second. I came in first. Mr. It's Roboto, I Thank swear you. 
I didn't botch your operation. Who was the first? I was. <laughs> I had the gun out. I was about to shoot the guy. And what did you come in? Just slammed the door down and made the guy run away. So thanks for that. I was about to kill okay. him. Okay. Well, was bottom dealer. line is we have the guy. Yeah. You're at my bar. Actually, we're outside now. So technically, this, this is This is property. still my property. That's the sidewalk. I think it's the city's property. Actually, we're on the grass. So she just makes grass grow underneath us. <laughs> <laughs> you, with the hard head thing, um, why were you after this man? He was a drug dealer, and he's dealing these really dangerous drugs that, for some reason, make people really violent and start attacking people, like as if they're like bears or something. It's really strange. So I was tracking him so I could see where he got these drugs from, because no one knows. Where these drugs came from, they disappeared a couple months ago, and I just, it was really bad stuff, so I wanted to make sure. And what were you going to do about it? Um, I was going to incapacitate him with my incapacitator gun. You see? I brandished my shotgun. Thank you. What are we going to do with him now? We can take him back to my office. It's pretty secure. That's not a bad plan, actually. My bar is still open, so y'all handle that. I'm going to go inside and take care of things. Well, you seem to have a pretty savvy cook that could take care of the place. He seemed like a nice chap, yeah? <laughs> you obviously haven't met James. He did make me a terrible fish and chips. I don't know if he can... Okay, let's not talk about the fish and chips. We're working on it. Okay. People well. don't normally come into a bar and order that. Well, they should. Obviously, they shouldn't. You didn't like it. Okay, well, obviously, we need to just move on. So, why don't we all get each other's numbers? Oh, it's okay. I already have your number. That's creepy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, did I mention I'm a tech genius? Yes. We kind of picked up on that. Um, I'm going to go home and change, and I will meet you at your place. I guess you will send me the address, and it'll probably just pop up on my phone. Yeah, just start, start a group message since you've got all our numbers. Make it easy. All right, it started. Cool. Okay. Well, so wait, what are you doing with the unconscious drug dealer <laughs> the, on the, the ground? The We're taking him to the unconscious. The <laughs> He's going with, with Hardhead. Oh, okay. All right. We're all going to Ren's place. Because I only have a scooter and I can't support this lump of things right here. Who travels by scooter? <laughs> um, thank you very much. It's actually renewable energy, so... And it's very quiet, so, you know, whatever. Oh, I appreciate that, actually. Thank you, you can take my black SUV. Okay, well, I will I see you the all keys. there in ten minutes. And Faye goes. And we, we, me and, me and <clears throat> Ren pick up the dude and throw him in the, in the boot, as Tessa would say, of the, <laughs> yes, yes. Of the vehicle. <laughs> Boom. Very nice. All right, so we transition to... Uh, Ren's business, uh, it's all empty. Um, what is the name of the guy that works there? Pablo. Pablo. Okay. Pablo uh, has gone home for the day, uh, so y'all have it all to yourselves. But uh, Ren, Bill, how how have you uh, positioned this dealer, uh, and what have y'all been doing? So he's sitting in one of the cubicle chairs, which are largely uncomfortable anyways. <laughs> they like once had a cushion, but really it's just metal now. Okay. They're just super uncomfortable. And so we've, Bill, I guess, strapped, just used the vines and just, like, wrapped him around it. Right. So he's, like, nice nice and snug. A little, a little too snug. And every ten minutes we just walk by and... <laughs> I've been roasting Ren for his <laughs> failed business. Oh, man. Like, we walked in and I was like, what is this? At least I have a business. What are you, just some um, slave to this guy, Jeremiah, that you keep talking about? He owns you. What do I have? At least I have a business. I got one worker. What do you have? Nothing. Because it's just you, and he owns you. So, sucks. Look, man, it straight up looks like you peddle used dictionaries out of this place. Like, I would not be surprised to find out that, that you, you buy and sell used socks. Like, this is just... The worst looking business I've ever seen in my bloody life. I'm surprised that we didn't walk in and see a bunch of people having a cockfight. You know, it's just dirty. It's tiny. 
it's perfect because when this guy wakes up, he's he's going to think, oh, this is a place where people bring other people to torture them. So I guess it works for our uses. Yeah. I don't need your crap. Okay. <laughs> I had my own business. It was Pascal and Associates, but now my VP took it over and now it's Descartes and Associates, but it's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. It's his business now. He took it. So this is just another up and coming business. And before you know it, I'll be a millionaire. So who's really winning? Me. Thank you. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, yes, Ren, you're amazing. I know. I know. Thank you. It's precisely what I was thinking. Amazingly delusional. And, and that's all right. Don't forget to take your medication, mate. Faye, I believe you went and changed out of your mm -hmm. school clothes. So what, what do you wear now? Um, really simple. Just um, she's got black toms on and um, like a black long sleeve shirt and then the dark green um, kind of cargo capri pant type things. Very Compostable-esque. Still the flower crown. Always a flower crown. Always a flower crown. Okay. Yes, I apologize to all my listeners for Jaime deciding to open up a bag of carrots and take a big old <laughs> bite of one right next to the mic. What's wrong? <coughs> Let the record show that David is now jumping on the table with his shirt off, yelling at me, brandishing a chainsaw. All right, anyways, uh, Esther, do you, back to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. You enjoy that carrot. I hope it's stale. Just kidding, Esther, not back to you. I hope it's Really, they would just like to continue their conversation. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Esther, what are you doing? I'm in um, black joggers, um, black tennis shoes, and a leather jacket. I've got my hair pulled back. You girls walk in to, uh, to Bill and Ren having a very intelligent uh, conversation, or rather an argument with each no, other. No, you suck. No, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Uh, and uh, as you're all coming together... Uh, the drug dealer starts to, uh, you see his eyelids start to flutter away. I don't, uh, <coughs> hey, yo, what's going on, man? What's, a, what's, a, green ropes? What is this? They're vines, actually. If you could, if you could be man, nice to them, that would this, be What is this, Tarzan great. and Jane? Get this stuff off me. Uh, so Faye, like, puts the banana leaf back over his mouth. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot he had a... Sock. The dirty sock in his mouth. You understand? He, he had spit it out, it out yeah. but uh, you stuff it back in along I put with it, the banana I put it, leaf. I, yeah. Uh, okay. Why? Why do we have him here? Why are we wanting to talk to him? What are y'all doing with him? Why do we care? Apparently, Big Bozo over here is after him for I don't know something. Okay, but I don't I need him because he's a drug dealer. Okay, so you doing. want to ask him about the drugs. Bill, what the heck do you want to ask him about? I want to ask him a few questions to help me find somebody. Okay, great. Well, let's start with Ren, get the drugs out of the way, and then you can go, okay? Nobody hit the guy while we're trying to talk to him so he doesn't fall asleep. Uh -huh. I wasn't uh -huh. planning on yes. it. I put my hand behind my back. I wasn't... The brass knuckles just start... Yeah, they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ren, he's all yours. Can't really talk to him if he's got a sock in his mouth and some kind of leaf over his I mouth. I pull his sock out and I put it back on my foot. <laughs> I grab the leaf and I'm like, oh, look, that was difficult. Y'all, man, this is, this is unright imprisonment or something like that. Y'all gotta let me go. We ain't let you go. You are staying here until you answer my questions, okay? Man, I ain't saying nothing. Y'all gonna let me go. Y'all gonna hear from my lawyer. <laughs> You're so cute. I'm sorry. Do you really have a lawyer? Yeah, man. I got, I got all the legal shit. You know. Yeah, man. You're not gonna escape. Just ever. I'm... Ask the questions. <laughs> Where do you get your drugs from? I just want to know. Who's giving them to you? What's going on? Man, why should I tell you anything? I got a business. I run my business. Pedro, that was point. your name, Pedro. What drugs are you selling? Man, I got anything you want. Uh... You looking to buy some? Naturally. So <laughs> what drugs are going to make me go crazy? I'm going to reach into his pockets. Yo, 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 man, that's my private property. You can't be digging around my pockets. I pull out whatever's in his pockets. Okay. You pull out a little baggie with uh, some pills inside. Let me just go back to my office. I'll investigate what this is. You just keep asking questions. Rough him up a bit. All I right. Really well, he's oh, there. thank you. <clears throat> Got rid of him. While oh. he's back there, can I ask him questions that I need to answer? Yeah, sure. Um... 
Zach, go ahead and get an investigate uh, roll ready, and I'll let you roll that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, so Bill, you're asking a question? Oh, or is Esther asking a question? No, Esther's not asking questions, but Esther would... Um, she's just trying to figure out what the heck this situation, this motley crew of people, whatever. She's mm -hmm. trying to get a grasp on things. Mm -hmm. um, and so can I make a roll for that? Sure. So an investigate roll. How are you? How are you going to do that? Um, I'm going to use my power tag surface thoughts. So, you're using the special powers of this ring. Yes. Um, does describe how it looks to us because I guess the as you're using your power, your camera zooms over to the ring. Uh, what what happens? Um, what does it look like? It's a silver ring. Um, it's got an it's an owl, um, and there's. Um, different stones on the owl, mm -hmm. um, and so the stones and the eyes kind of light up. Okay. Um, Not, like, super, like, laser bright, just, like, yeah. kind of flicker. Eight. Okay, everybody, go go around and tell uh, Esther kind of what your, uh, what your, not deep, dark secrets or anything like that, but what, what's, like, at the front of your mind, uh, what are you, what are you dealing with? You describe it, like, in one emotion, how is she feeling right now? We'll go with anxious. Okay. Okay. So that's the vibe you're getting from uh, from Faye. Uh, what about Ren? Yeah, distrustful is probably the best one. Yeah. What about Bill? Annoyed. Jeremiah told you he wanted it done quietly and quickly. Mm hmm And you know after you gave the old lady a pass last night, um, you know, he's not too happy with you. Yep. Pedro? Yeah, Pedro. Oh, service thoughts for Pedro. Mm -hmm. Oh, good point. Um, <clears throat> he is scared. Uh, very scared. All right, so Bill. All right, Pedro. I know you hang out with Marcus. And I checked a couple of places where he's supposed to be. And he's at neither of those places. I'm sure he's talked to you about what's going on. And that's why I know you know who Jeremiah is. And since I know that, you will know that I can do some very not nice things to you, regardless of what the people in here are saying. And I can make you tell me where he is. Mar not Marcus, you mean, you mean Dr. Malcolm? Man, I don't... Listen, he, he just found me, all right? He found me. He, he gave me these drugs, all right? The first one was free, uh, but once the kids started coming back, he started charging me for them, you know? Uh, I had to pay him a little cut of what the kids were paying uh, but man, I don't, man, I don't know anything about, about Jeremiah or what, whatever you're talking about, man. Where is he? I don't know. He, he always, he <clears> always <throat> texts me the location of where we're supposed to meet. It's always different. You have his number? Yeah. Give me it. Man, my hands are tied up. I don't care. I pull, I pull his phone out of his pocket. What's your passcode? One, two, three, four. Open it up, go to the messages. You are an odd individual, yeah? All right, which, wh where's it at? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the 572 number. Shout out to any of our listeners with the 572 area code. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> you probably live in the middle of nowhere, you punks. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kidding. Uh, all right, so I get the 572 number. I put it into my cell phone. I text mm -hmm. it into the group chat. And mm -hmm. then I also text, hey, Tin Man, find out what you can about this number. Okay. And then we'll transition to Ren, who uh, gets that text while he is mm -hmm. loading the, uh, the drugs into, you know, whatever sort of device you're going to use to uh, do that. So I've got, like, one on, like, this, like, high-tech scanner that's, like, scanning what exactly looks like and what's going on, see for any kind of hidden signs of what it is and then I've just got into like different machines like one where it's just like chopping them all up and spinning it to see what happens and just like numerous machines and I've like distributed them to figure out what um what the pills are and can I roll to see eight the water that was you know used and dehydrating all that science terms whatever um came from the river. Uh, the river runs through the city, uh, and it could have been anywhere along that river. I also got the text message, or I just want to run a test and check check to see like 
was connected to the phone number, see if I can get anything out of it. You see that the texts that uh, from this number have all been to different locations. You could use these locations to kind of triangulate with what you already know about the river to kind of triangulate where you think this base of operations is. Yeah, so, so I'll do that. I'll like pull up on the map on my laptop and okay. figure out where all the things are and then look at the river. So I'll use my power tags of all the new toys, high tech uh, laptop, and then code breaker in okay. case he's got some kind of firewalls. Uh, he doesn't have any firewalls, so just roll those, those first two. <coughs> Nine. Okay, um, you 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 do all these things and it like narrows it down and the shaded parts of your holographic map show up and it narrows it down to two locations that it could be. Uh, they're right there on the uh, river. They're both warehouses. You think that either one of these locations could be where the drugs are being cut and made and distributed from. Cool. Distributed from. Distributed, distributed, whatever. It's all the same. Tomato, tomato. So, that's what you get from your investigate role. While he's doing all the high-tech stuff back, or in the back, what is everybody else doing? So you get text messages from him. You don't know where he is from. You don't know who he is besides Dr. Marcus Malcolm. Why would you do business with somebody you know nothing about? Because he gave me, you know, free drugs or whatever. He said, you know, this is a tight new designer drug and it was going to sell. And he just gave it to me and he said, you know what, see how well this sells and, you know, come back and, you know, get the rest later. And it sold really well. So, you know. You're an idiot. All right. <laughs> I think that's about as useful as you'll be to us. You sure you don't know anything else? Nah, man, I don't know anything. You gonna let me go now, or what? <laughs> We're gonna kill you now. Well, Yo, I'm, I'm what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? I don't know that that's the best idea. Yeah, and, man, unless... I'm, with, I'm with the chicks. Yo, don't kill, don't kill, um, brother, man. Um, I, no, we don't prefer not to be called chick. chicks. No, no. Chickies? Oh, gosh. No. Well, if you give me a reason not to... Man, I, I I gave you my phone, whatever. Like you got the lead that you need, or you know you can go do your your Dick Tracy stuff or whatever. Watch your language, that I mean, lady's present. <laughs> don't you think we might be able to use him for other information? He's not gonna tell anyone about us because then he would have to admit to whatever was going on. I'm not saying we're gonna let him go. Well, no, we're not gonna use him anymore. Hey, I need some more workers. Two of mine just quit. I can just hire him as like a oh maid or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're going to keep him prisoner. No, nah, man, I ain't wearing none of those French maid outfits. I ain't me. No one said anything about a French maid outfit. Yo, he said I, maid. That's what I he said. Think also, when did he walk in this room? <laughs> <laughs> I plaster my hand on his. Face plaster, plaster. Yeah. not place, not cover. No, you <laughs> plaster. <laughs> and I say he's got a good point. If he's working for him, then we can keep an eye on him. Yeah, yeah. You, you got a job. You can stop selling stupid crap on the streets. Take an honest job. No, no. I mean, he has to keep working for. We Dr. need that contact. No. Well, obviously, yeah. When next time he texts, then we find the meat place, the meet up, and we go the and meat. confront him. <laughs> and what kind of meat is it? Hamburger meat <laughs> or ground so turkey? Said meat place. I was like, <laughs> locker of meat. <laughs> Actually, I have a better idea. I have a gun that I can just place a tracker in him. So we can always keep track of where he is. In me? Why would you say that in front of him, man? Yeah? <laughs> it's, it's DARPA level. <laughs> Dark. <laughs> what? What hey, can mean? we say can we say that he can't hear what, what we're talking about? Yeah, like so. Once you say like, yo, why would you say that in front? Like you can pull him away. Okay, we put banana leaf ears. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Faye does not do that. <laughs> do you have anything that we could like knock him out with? Like, 
I got this incapacitor again, knock him out, and then we'll put... That, that way he doesn't know where the tracker is. Yeah, and we'll put the tracker in him, and... Is it possible that it could make him forget things? Yeah. Like that he's got a tracker in him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he won't even feel it. It'll be nothing. I'll just put it right there on the back of his neck. I mean, he won't even know it's there. All right. Do you have something that looks like a fake tracker that we could stick on the outside of him so he could think that he found it and that he duped us? Yeah. Surely a tech genius like yourself could figure that out. Oh, I don't need anything from you, plant lady, okay? Plant lady? <laughs> you've got the vines, you've got the, what is it, banana leaves? Who even does that? Okay, flower crown, I'm sorry. So Anyways. Oh, y'all gotta let me go, what? Oi! <laughs> I, I gotta go, what? Shut it. Hi. So, I'm like, yeah, Bill, I've got these dumb-looking Band-Aids. They've got, like, electronic stuff on it. I mean, they look really cheap. We'll just put it, like, under his arm or something. Yeah. Something ridiculous. Sounds good. All right, let's knock him out. <laughs> Pull my gun. He's like, yo, 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 man. Put, um, I want no trouble, man. Just let me go. I won't tell anybody about the... Uh. What does your incapacitator gun fire? Is it, like, dark? Is it congusting Incapacitators? Energy? Incapacitator. It's it's like a, it just fires electricity or like energy. Okay. So there's no. It's like a taser casing or anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. So you just. Bleep. And since he is, well over the threshold of his spectrums, I'll let you knock him out. Yeah. So he's knocked out. Roll a uh, a sneak around, to see if you can successfully hide this uh, hide this tracker from him. Okay. The tracker's going in him. Yeah 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I'll use all the new toys, tech lab, and then computers. Okay. Please, oh, please. No, thank you. <laughs> Ten. Ten? All right, sweet. So, you uh, you successfully, are you putting it, like, in his neck or something? Yeah. Okay, you put it in his neck, and you put the dummy one underneath his arm. Can we talk about how Ren and Bill just performed surgery? <laughs> on this guy in his neck without like no 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 it's, no, it's, it's like a gun yeah, it's, yeah. okay okay yeah, yeah, yeah. they just tagged him yeah. yeah bagged him and tagged him okay, okay. so uh, what are you uh, what are you doing with him now I say we take him to the bar and put a bunch of empty cups in front of him so that when he wakes up I think it was just a bad dream that he had a lot to drink okay which bar are you taking him to or we just throw him in an alley with a with a half empty <laughs> bottle or something that, that's better. Yeah, let's do that. We cut to an empty, dark alleyway. We see Pedro's body just unceremoniously flung to the dirt, and then a bottle clatters next to him. And then from somewhere off screen, we hear a car door shut and the engine flaring as the car roars away. Uh, the shot lingers on Pedro for a few seconds, and then he starts to move, and he groans, and... Uh, uh, he slowly gets up, he takes a ball in his hand, looks at it, kind of sets it down, rubs his head, and as he does, he looks down at his chest, and he sees a bandage with all this weird circuitry underneath the wrapping uh, on his chest, and then uh, he looks at it, and he says, what the hell? End of episode. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Misconceptions. You can check out next episode when it releases on Monday. Hey, and cool fact, I just threw out a random area code, 572. Uh, I didn't know where it was from or what it was to. And uh, we Googled it after the show, and sure enough, 571 is an area code. 573 is an area code. But there is nowhere in Canada or the United States that has a 572 area code. So, completely by happenstance, I discovered the area code for City of Mist. Uh, it's like it's there, but it's not at the same time. Ooh, spooky scary. You can find Misconceptions on Facebook and Twitter, where you can follow us and just keep up to date with what we're doing. If you like us, share us. Get us out to role-playing groups, to people who listen to actual play podcasts, or just your group of friends who might like this. Uh, we're a new show, and every listener counts. Along that same vein, if you want to help us, the best thing you can do for us right now is to rate and review us on iTunes. We are, like I said, we're a new show. We don't have a lot of followers yet because a lot of people don't know about us yet. 
Sharing us helps, yeah, but rating and reviewing us increases our visibility on iTunes. The City of Mist RPG is a production of Sun of Oak Productions. If you want to learn more about their products, you can visit them at sunofoak.com. The music you heard at the beginning of this episode, and we'll hear here in a little bit, was written by Aaron Wharton. And if you like his music, you can check out more of it at aaronwharton.net. That's all for today, and remember... T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E spells they are. You would not use it to say, you know what, I like listening to their podcast.